Hello everyone. This video will go through how to set up a Windows cluster on Windows Server 2008 R2 so that you can utilize the always on feature in SQL Server 2012. Configuring a Windows cluster for SQL Server always on is a little easier than setting up a Windows cluster for SQL clustering. The big difference is that for always on, the Windows cluster doesn't need to have shared disks. The databases can be stored locally on each node. To be able to create a cluster, the user creating the cluster, in this case your domain user, must have the read all properties and also the create computer objects permissions on the domain. You should check with your network or domain admin to make sure that you have these permissions first before continuing. To set up a Windows cluster, the first thing we need to do is add the feature. Go to Server Manager, then right click on Features and select Add Features. The feature we want to add is failover clustering. I already installed this, but if you haven't already, check the box and click install. And this needs to be done on all the nodes in the cluster. So let me go to my second server and make sure that that feature is installed there as well. And it is. So back to my first server. The cluster feature is installed on all the nodes. So the next step is to run the failover cluster manager. And that's under start administrative tools failover cluster manager. Before creating the cluster, it's always a good idea to validate your configuration. Let's do that first. Click on Validate a Configuration. Enter the names of each of the servers you want to cluster. Click Next. Run all tests and click Next and next again on the confirmation screen. Once the validation finishes, click on View Report. I have a couple warnings here for network and storage. If I click on one of them, I'll get more details. For the network warning, it's saying that I only have one network interface, so it's a possible single point of failure. So this warning is okay for these servers, since they're test machines. Let's check the storage warnings. And this is just warning me that these servers don't have any shared storage attached. These warnings are okay too, since always on doesn't need shared storage. It can just use the local storage. So nothing to worry about from the validation report. Now we can move on and create the cluster. Click on create a cluster. Again, enter the server names you want to cluster. Here, enter in the network name for the cluster and also enter the IP address assigned to it. You may need to have your network admin reserve the DNS name and the IP address for you so that you can use them here.
once you enter them in click next and click next again and it'll begin creating the cluster. It just finished creating and it says that it's successfully completed. Click on view report and make sure that there are no errors. I get a couple warnings here for the quorum and I'll explain what the quorum is in a bit. So the cluster finished creating successfully and now we see our cluster here and if we expand nodes we'll see our servers under there. If we go on to the second server we should also see that cluster created under the cluster manager. and they do show up. So let's go back to the first server. The next step we need to configure the cluster quorum settings. A quorum is the number of elements that must be online for the cluster to continue running. Basically each element gets a vote and the majority wins. So take a three node cluster for example the majority of the nodes need to be up for the cluster to stay online. If one node goes down and the other two are up, the cluster will still remain online because the two that are online form the majority of the votes. For the setup that I have here, I only have two nodes. If one goes down and the other is up, the cluster will go down because one out of two is not a majority. So I actually need another resource or element to cast a vote. I can either use a shared disk or a shared folder. And the shared disk or shared folder can't physically be on any of the nodes in the cluster. So if I configure my quorum settings to have my two nodes plus a shared folder, if one of the nodes goes down and the other is up and the shared folder is also up, then the node that's online plus the shared folder makes up the majority of the votes so the cluster will stay up and running. Let's go ahead and configure the quorum. Right click on the cluster, go to more actions and select configure cluster quorum settings. Under select quorum configuration I'm going to choose node and file share majority. I already have a shared folder set up on a third server that's not part of this cluster. Once it finished configuring, click finish. And now you see that the quorum is set to node and file share majority. So that's how you set up a Windows cluster to get ready for configuring SQL Server Always On.